What's your reaction to the latest? Well, let me just say, first of all, J.J. Watt is one of the greatest players who ever lived, right? But I'm very curious at this moment to hear from Key because Keyshawn Johnson, you're a person with a lot of experience on, on, in football, and I'm curious to know your point of view before I chime in. Well, I would say this is not a bad day for the Houston Texans or J.J. Watt. J.J. Watt deserves to be given an opportunity to go to a winner, a perennial winner. Let's say, for instance, there's a Tampa Bay Buccaneer team out there that's looking for him, or a 49ers team, or a Seattle team, or, or a team like the Kansas City Chiefs. Somewhere he can win and have an opportunity to be a champion. He's done everything else. I think when you hear the word released, the first thing people go, oh, my God, they released J.J. Watt, the greatest player in Texans history. It's not that bad. It really isn't. It's a good thing for him, and it's a good thing for the organization that wants to blow things up and start fresh, considering that they probably are not going to have their franchise quarterback underneath the center for the 2021 season. So I like it. I like the move. I think it helps. It gives J.J. Watt an opportunity to go be a champion somewhere without having to worry about if they can trade him, trade value, all of those different things. He's got a couple years of football left in him. Why keep him at that defensive end position in Houston when the Texans probably aren't going anywhere? Now, that's why I wanted to hear it from you first, Key, because that's not my first impression. I don't think that's going to be most people's first impressions. That's inside football stuff. Like, it don't, uh, don't make this out as though, oh, more dysfunction on the Texans. This is actually par for the course. They're probably going to do this anyway. But it has – it just looks bad. The optics, as the kids say nowadays, are bad for the Texans because – if you have such beef with Deshaun Watson, who has a sterling reputation on and off the field of play as a winner, a champion, a leader, the face of a franchise, the, you know, since college, right, he sprinkles his magic pixie dust everywhere and everyone believes in themselves and they can win. The way he carries himself is the way you want your franchise quarterback to be. He's the envy of every team in the league, with the exception of maybe the Chiefs, who have a guy who has a guy even better, right? When you poison the well to the point where this dude is saying, I want out no matter what, I'm not even going to return phone calls, you're not getting the benefit of the doubt. When something like this happens, people are going to say, oh, Andre Johnson says what he or, or, or says publicly what he said. People are looking at that. Whoa, J.J. Watt now is coming out. What he said, it's not simply like um, the news comes out. He tweets out directly. I want you to hear from me, everybody. The team released me. You know, that, that is shots fired by the greatest offensive player in their history and Andre Johnson and the greatest defensive player in their history, J.J. Watt. The signal that I am getting from everywhere, just stepping back as a football fan, is the greatest players in this franchise's history have a problem with this franchise. I think that's the way it's going to be interpreted today. I, I think it'll be interpreted that way until you dive into it. It just makes sense for a guy like J.J. Watt to go on and continue to play football with the winner. Once Deshaun Watson is gone from the Texans, that team is not a playoff team. That team will not be any good at all. And then when you look at it, if I'm J.J. Watt, why do I want to be there anyway? I mean, the, the guy that gave us hope and opportunity and a chance to compete in the National Football League will be on another team somewhere. So I want to be able to take my skill set and my opportunity while I have a chance to win a championship somewhere else. And the Houston Texans, if you want to dig into it, they screwed everything up because if Deshaun was still there, then J.J. Watt would still be there, which means that they would have an opportunity to compete. And back it up some more. If DeAndre Hopkins was well, there. Yeah. Yep. Like, it starts with DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah. They traded his guy. They traded. Could you imagine Joe Montana finding out on ESPN somehow that they had traded Jerry Rice? Like, could you – like, the, you, have, you have Deshaun Watson and DeAndre Hopkins – in their prime? Well, clearly, Max, though, they screwed that up. We all kind of know. We're revisiting the history of this. We already know that Jack Easterby and Kyle McNair completely screwed everything up with the DeAndre Hopkins trade, along with Bill O'Brien, who was in charge at the time, with not having any conversations with Deshaun Watson. To figure out, here's so interesting, I tell people this all the time, if it was a money thing, you can always go to your quarterback and say, we have to redo you. Sure, yeah. Will you take a little bit less so we can keep your number one receiver? 
Clearly, it wasn't just a money thing. It was something deeper. But, but look at the, the dominoes. Organization. Look at the dominoes and how they felt. Like I didn't even include DeAndre Hopkins when I talked about the greatest players, offense and defense in the franchise's history. It starts with DeAndre Hopkins. Then the next domino to fall. You know, like you go, uh, Andre Johnson says something. Deshaun Watson now wants out. J.J. Watt is not doing the team any favors when he's tweeting out to his fans directly, I want you to hear it from me. They released me. These are the best players ever in the franchise. 